though there is a lot of uh, data, it's a well established that cardiorespiratory fitness is well related with uh, survival. Growing evidence tell us that there are substantial data already telling us that non-aerobic and physical, comp physical fitness components are also related to mortality. I am Claudio Gil Araujo. I am a sport and exercise physician, and I am a dean of uh, research and education at the Exercise Medicine Clinic, Clinimax in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Let's talk about our study. The title itself tells a lot about our study. Muscle power outperforms trend in predicting mortality in middle uh, age and older men and women. I have the pleasure to talk with you and sharing the article that they are publishing in the Centenarian Edition, Volume 100, of the very prestigious Mayo Clinic Proceedings. I'm very honored with being a lead author. You are likely familiar with uh, cardiorespiratory fitness, or as I always prefer to call aerobic fitness. But of course, physical fitness is not only aerobic. There are non-aerobic components, mainly body composition, flexibility, balance, muscle strength, and power. In previous studies of our group, we have been using several instruments or several simple tasks, like a sitting rising test, 10 second one-legged stance test, and the flex test to show that four levels of non-aerobic physical fitness are related to mortality. In this study now, we move ahead because you are looking muscle power. There are also data in literature showing that muscle strength, especially when measured by hand width test, is related to mortality. But why is the difference? What is the difference between muscle strength and muscle power? Power, coming back into physics, power is force times velocity. So muscle strength is part of power, but velocity is the another component. So if I do a this was cool, making like this or making fast, I am not changing the strength. If I have some uh, dumbbells in my hand, I'm not changing this the strength, but I'm changing the power using the component of velocity. So with this background in, in mind, we can now start to discuss our study. What we try to do, since you have the chance to evaluate in the same visit, muscle strength and muscle power, and also have a lot of uh, interesting clinical data in the individuals, we're able to use our Clinimax exercise score and select those from 46 to 75 years old, men and women, and they, we start to measure in 201, and we end our, our data collection in 2022. That means 21 periods of study. And we have followed them for vital data. From the health secretary of uh, Rio de Janeiro State, we obtained the data of survival. And then we are able to look our muscle function testing and the data from the individual vital data and a lot of uh, important co values like history of coronary artery disease, dyslipidemia, diabetes, uh, age, and of course, since the muscle testing are so different for men and women, we separate them for analysis. We have uh, nearly 4,000 subjects for our study, and the mean, median follow-up period was over uh, nearly 11 years, and we have about 11%, 12% of deaths in our sample. So for natural cause, this is also important to, to, to emphasize because we exclude this related to external cause of death like homicide, suicide, car traffic, accident, and so on, and also by COVID-19 because we had where our sample were dramatically uh, hit by COVID. So we separate those that die from COVID as we have done in previous studies with our cohort. And what we found, we found that those with uh, lower, compare, especially compare the upper and lower decile, 
we found a huge difference in muscle power. And that related to muscle power. And smaller difference with uh, muscle strength. Also, it's important to mention that we consider relative muscle strength and relative muscle power. What I mean by relative muscle strength and relative muscle power? We divide the values that we obtain in the device, in the hand grip, and measuring the dynamometer, the upper hole movement, movement. What we found, we divide these values by body weight. So we have some scarnalization. But even, the la even that, men have about 67% to 7% higher, in average, muscle power as compared to a woman, and they are 50% higher values and the muscle strength as compared uh, men and women. You can see in the supplemental material of our, our article, our paper, there's a video showing us, showing uh, a demo video uh, about the muscle testing, how we did. But what I would like to tell you now are the implications of this, this results. What are the implications? First, the conclusion. The main conclusion is muscle power, relative muscle power is the strongest predictor, a stronger predictor of mortality as compared to muscle strength. So what are the implications? For clinicians, you may have to think about and including muscle power assessment in your routine checking, especially for older adults. And why muscle power is so relevant? Because when you have to pick up your groceries in the supermarket, or you have to put your luggage in the upper beam compartment of an airplane, you need power. When you have to stand from the floor, rise from the floor, or even from the chair, you need power more than strength. When you climb stairs, you are using power. So power and power declines more than strength with aging. So it's very relevant when you talk about frailty, when you talk about sarcopenia, when you talk about dynapenia, that is the measurement of power and strength related to muscle, you may have to think about to evaluate muscle power. But if I, I don't have the dynamometers in my clinic or I don't have in my office the dynamometer, what I can do? Maybe you can use the sitting writing test. It measures power. It's a good relationship between muscle power and the results of sitting writing test. When you prescribe exercise, when you recommend exercise, you will most likely nowadays you include resistance training as part of your prescription. Resistance training has been recommended by all about all uh, institutional uh, scientific institutional uh, boards around the world: uh, American Heart Association, American College of Cardiology, WHO, uh, European Society of Cardiology. All of them have recommended to include resistance training. But now, resistance training, most of times, and this also brings the attention for the general population, and even for yourself, practitioner, that goes for the gym. Other than only thinking about the number of exercise, number of sets to perform, number of repetitions per set, and perhaps the interval that you take between one set and another, now think about the velocity of execution. How fast are you doing? And when you want to perform velocity-based training, or as I prefer to call power training, you may have to think or prioritize, that's important, the speed of execution. How fast are you moving? And the best thing for you, remember, as fast as possible. That's the way that you can train power training. What are the future issues for us? The most interesting thing to, that's just come in uh, my mind, and perhaps in your mind as well, is if I am good in aerobic, those could be good in power. As diagnostic information, we are going to test that. And second, if I now start to do power training and I improve my power, this is affecting my survival. It will be a, a favorable response for my survival, we have to test that. Again, I'm pleased to talk with you, and I, you have my address at the end of this, and my email, and if you have any questions, I'll be pleased to answer you. This study has been carried out in an exercise clinic, a medicine clinic, a clinic medicine in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and we had a good team of research, some of the best research in the world from seven different countries that join us to analyze this data 
and bring for you as a full paper. Thank you for your attention. We hope that you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mailclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com Mail Proceedings, or journal updates on Facebook, www.facebook.com Mail Clinic Proceedings. You can also follow us on X, formerly known as Twitter, available at Mail Proceedings. More information about healthcare at Mail Clinic is available at www.mailclinic.org. This content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research, published by Elsevier Incorporated. All rights are reserved, including those for text and data mining, AI training, and similar technologies.